The problem of hostility and bias toward Israel and its supporters on college campuses is becoming well known. What is less well known is that similar hateful materials are now being promoted in American high schools and even middle schools. This is Newton South High School located in the town of Newton, Massachusetts, an affluent suburb west of Boston. Newton schools claim to celebrate the dignity of all people, but there is a notable exception. My daughter uh, brought to my attention this article from the Arab, uh, Arab World Notebook that she was given as part of a history test, uh, history class on women in the Arab world. And on one page is a paragraph that says that uh, Israeli soldiers are, uh, Israeli occupation forces are imprisoning, torturing, and killing Arab women by the hundreds. And my daughter came to me and said, Daddy, is this true? She was very concerned. I said that I'm going to give the, the, the school a call and, and get this straightened out. World history teacher Jessica Engel rejected Tony's concerns. She uh, was adamant that the material was appropriate. Uh, had been fully vetted and that uh, she would, the, the curriculum was going to stand as, as it was. Tony received the same response from Jennifer Morrill, the head of the history department at Newton South. The Arab World Studies Notebook has been rejected by many school boards and condemned by the American Jewish Committee as both political propaganda against Israel and religious proselytization for Islam. The notebook was published jointly by the Middle East Policy Council and AWAR, both funded by Saudi Arabia, whose anti-Western, anti-democratic, anti-gay, anti-Semitic, anti-women, and anti-Christian publications are spreading throughout America. I also had a meeting with Joel Stembridge, who's the principal of South, which was uh, quite honestly a waste of time. I mean, nothing came out of it. Uh, at times it was, it was insulting and patronizing, and I actually came away uh, very discouraged from that meeting. Joel Stembridge said to me, you know what, Tony, he looked right at me, he said, next year uh, we're going to be studying some things this that are going to be point. even more upsetting to you vis-a-vis -vis the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What are you going to do then, he said. It was almost like a threat. So, you know, I was, I was pretty upset. I said to my wife and I said to my daughter, I'm going to do something about this, bring this to the attention of the school, and this has to be removed from the curriculum. There's no way that this can stand. The Arab World Studies Notebook should never have been used by Newton due to its bias, bigotry, inaccuracies, and glorification of Islam. The notebook, which contains supplementary teaching resources on Islam, was purchased by the Newton Public Schools in the mid-1990s and includes a poem about Jews. The usurper's flesh will be my food. Beware, beware of my hunger and my anger. And a ludicrous claim. Muslims sailed across the Atlantic and discovered the New World in the year 889. Newton School Superintendent David Fleischman defended the inclusion of the notebook in the ninth grade history curriculum as part of an effort to encourage critical thinking. Tony's experience at the high school mobilized Jewish parents and community members to find out just what is being taught in the Newton schools. One of the textbooks used by Newton teachers is The Modern Middle East, written by James Gelvin, an anti-Israel ideologue and a supporter of the academic boycott against Israel. In his textbook, Gelvin compares Zionism to European colonialism and writes, the Arab-Israeli conflict is, simply put, a dispute over real estate. This contention ignores the true nature of the 100-year-old conflict, which is in great part religious. Radical Muslim anti-Zionism is a matter of revenge for honor lost. The existence of Israel, a, 
a Dimi people, a Dimi people who have established independence in the heart of Dar al Islam is a terrible blow to Muslim honor and, and it's a kind of blasphemy. So destroying Israel is an act of revenge that will restore honor. The religious nature of the conflict is typically ignored or denied by those who want to portray Israel as irrationally unwilling to make land concessions. Gelvin wrote his textbook while receiving payments from Sheikh Zayed, the anti-Semitic billionaire president of the United Arab Emirates and founder of the Zayed Center, which according to the ADL, promoted anti-Americanism and anti-Semitism. When parents complained, they were told that the textbook had been vetted and that the head of the school's history department, Jennifer Morrill, got it at a workshop for teachers conducted by Harvard Center for Middle East Studies, and therefore, it would be kept in the classroom. The Harvard Middle East Center has received funds from the Saudi government and Aramco, the Saudi oil company. The then director of the Harvard Center was Baber Johansson, an active supporter of the Boycott, Divestment and Sanction, or BDS movement, against Israel. And the then director of the center's outreach program was Paul Baran, a BDS leader in Somerville, Massachusetts. Baran is married to Palestinian activist Hilary Rantisi, director of the Middle East Initiative at Harvard University, who promotes the dissolution of the Jewish state. Harvard has also received a $20 million donation from Saudi Prince Al-Walid bin Talal to establish an Islamic center. A significant portion of the faculty at the Talal Islamic Center at Harvard also teach at the Harvard Center for Middle East Studies and are active in promoting an anti-Israel agenda at the school. In teaching students about the Arab-Israel conflict, Newton Public Schools use a series of four maps created by the Palestine Liberation Organization Public Relations Unit. These maps are also used by Harvard's Paul Baran in his public school teacher training seminars. Newton students were not told that these are PLO propaganda maps. These maps falsely depict Israel as progressively stealing Palestinian land. Underneath the original maps, in fine print, there was even a disclaimer admitting that the maps are for illustrative purposes only. Boundary representations are not authoritative. At some point between the maps publication by the PLO and their landing on the desks of Newton students, this disclaimer that the maps were not literally true was removed and they are now being taught as actual fact. The maps lie about the history of the conflict. The pre-1948 map shows part of the British Mandate, not a Palestinian country. The West Bank and Gaza were not part of a Palestinian country, but were occupied by Jordan and Egypt. The final maps show the first ever Palestinian-ruled area created by Israel. Newton school officials claimed that these biased Palestinian maps were balanced by maps with pro-Israel points of view. However, no such maps were found. Newton schools are not unique in promoting Palestinian propaganda and lies. An MSNBC Middle East reporter used the same maps in a news report. Last Thursday, in an attempt to talk about the context for the current turmoil in the Middle East, we showed a series of maps of the changing geography in that region. We realized after we went off the air, the maps were not factually accurate and we regret using them. MSNBC and the reporter subsequently apologized and corrected the record. Newton schools have not. In the classroom, instead of using the authentic Hamas charter as a basis for discussion, Newton schools presented students with a falsified version, deceptively edited, but which the school claimed as a primary source document. In the Newton version of the Hamas charter, all instances of the word Jews have been replaced with the word Zionists. All signs of Jew hatred that appear in the original Hamas charter are omitted in the Newton version. By ignoring the genocidal intent of Hamas and the significant role of religion in the conflict, 
Newton students are encouraged to believe that the conflict is simply a border dispute, a fight over land, not religion, and therefore can be easily resolved. This is consistent with Professor Gelvin's and Harvard's false framing of the conflict primarily as simply a land dispute of competing nationalisms. In another lesson, students were to consider whether or not there should actually be a Jewish state. To educate themselves on the issue, students were provided with quotes from experts whose opinions were presumably meant to represent all sides. But the package of quotes described as prominent voices on the one-state solution and two-state solution was crudely manipulated. The Newton curriculum prominent voices include five radical anti-Israel and anti-Semitic activists, as well as three left-wing Israeli leaders and a New York Times journalist critical of Israel. There are no centrist or right-wing pro-Israel experts presented. This insidious and dishonest approach deliberately skews the center of the discussion toward the radical anti-Israel views of the conflict. The prominent pro-Palestinian voices include Ali Abu Nima, a Palestinian-American propagandist who supports terrorism, opposes the existence of a Jewish state, and has engaged in promoting anti-Semitic tropes. He is the publisher of the Electronic Intifada, a pro-Hamas website that demonizes Israel and describes Palestinian leaders who talk with Israel as collaborators. Edward Said was a Columbia University professor of English and comparative literature, a Palestinian-American who promoted the idea that Westerners cannot judge or criticize non-Westerners. Said was active in promoting the notion that Israel is a colonial state and needs to be eliminated. Tony Jute, professor in European studies at New York University, promoted the dissolution of Israel as a Jewish state. Virginia Tilly, professor of political science at Southern Illinois University, is a staunch supporter of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions of Israel movement, and an advocate for eliminating Israel as a Jewish state and replacing it with a binational state, presumably one in which Arabs and Jews would peacefully coexist. Sadly, there are no Arab societies which provide women or religious minorities equal rights. Today, non-Muslim minorities in the Arab world are being mostly ethnically cleansed or destroyed. And most astounding is the inclusion of John Spritzler, a self-described 60s radical still at it. He is a retired research scientist and former leader, along with Paul Baran, in the Somerville Divestment Project. Spritzler is the editor of a website that rants about the world revolution, anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, and the influence of Jewish money in American politics. Spritzler's website includes articles that claim, for example, that Israel engineered the 1976 hijacking of the Air France plane that ultimately resulted in the famous rescue in Entebbe, Uganda. Another article claims that the 1985 murder of Leon Klinghoffer on the cruise ship Achille Loro by Palestinian terrorists was actually an Israeli black propaganda operation. Prominent voices on the two-state solution include Shimon Peres, former president of Israel and former leader of the left-wing Labour Party, Naomi Chazan, member of several left-wing parties in Israel. Ehud Olmert, former prime minister. And Thomas Friedman, New York Times columnist and a harsh critic of Israel. Newton students are not presented with any experts who are representative of mainstream Israeli opinion today. They are not presented with hateful and venomous sermons and public pronouncements by Palestinian officials. Moreover, a book used at Newton schools has a recommended reading list that includes the extremist writings of both Said Kutub, a leading jihadi writer for the Muslim Brotherhood, and Yusuf Karadawi, a Muslim Brotherhood preacher whose sermons call for the murder of Jews and gays. <laughs> وكان هذا أدباً
but students are not shown the hateful views these men propagate against people they call infidels. These are some examples of materials being taught in Newton School's curriculum for 9th and 10th graders, all in the name of global understanding and critical thinking skills. Biased education about the Middle East in Newton schools is actively promoted by a web of non-profit organizations and social activists who are targeting public schools for political propaganda. They provide teaching materials and speakers, which in many instances bypass public scrutiny. Significant funding for this content comes from Arab countries. Concerned taxpayers have met with teachers and officials asking to see curricular materials on the Middle East, Jews, and Israel, but have been stonewalled. School Superintendent David Fleischman demanded Newton residents pay $4,000 to see what their children are learning. And School Committee Chair Matt Hills sent an email to his staff showing them how to block citizens from obtaining the offending materials. Given the FOIA request, we have asked David Fleischman to avoid compiling and distributing curriculum for this or any course included in the request. Unlike other Massachusetts schools, Newton school officials refuse to make their school curriculum and teaching materials available online. Let's see all the published materials on the internet or bring them to the public's eyes so that uh, concerned uh, people like me don't have to file FOIA requests. I mean, this is absurd. School Superintendent David Fleischman defended inclusion of the notebook as part of the district's efforts to encourage critical thinking. He told parents the notebook was used as a primary source supplemental material in teaching different perspectives. Chairwoman Claire Sokoloff rejected the characterization of the material as poisonous. She said, it just contains opinions you don't agree with. Is blood libel against Jews a matter of opinion? After months of parental and citizen protest, the school committee finally agreed to remove the Arab World Studies notebook. You, you mean to put this to rest by saying, uh, telling us that the Arab World Studies notebook has been removed from the schools, not because it's uh, Saudi-produced hate literature, but because, I, and I quote you, uh, there's a general sense the materials were outdated. It's hard to believe that you removed it because it was old. Documents obtained from the Newton schools under the Massachusetts Public Records Law have revealed that the Arab World Studies Notebook was still in use in at least three separate classes during the 2013 academic year. Newton school teacher Faye X. Castle, who spent two years as a Peace Corps volunteer in Morocco, included the notebook in her ninth grade ancient world history class curriculum. Newton school officials claimed that the reintroduction of the notebook resulted from an oversight and was eventually corrected. This cannot be verified given the school's denial of access to the curriculum. American school children are being taught a distorted biased and false understanding of the Middle East conflict and the Jewish state. Sadly, they are being groomed for Jew hatred and a more intense anti-Israel hostility on college campuses. Newton schools are failing to provide scholarly education, demand an end to biased teaching, public access to school curriculum, an investigation into how anti-Israeli propaganda is being inserted into the classroom, sensitivity training about the right of Jewish self-determination. Newton deserves better. Call or write. Newton Mayor Seti D. Warren. School Committee Chair Matt Hills. Newton School Superintendent David Fleischman. Newton South High School Principal Joel Stembridge.
Newton North High School principal, Mark Aronson.